Hi, I'm Dawn Reese, and welcome to the first episode of Belly Dance Celebrity Fashion Show. In this exciting new show, we will profile many of the different aspects of this beautiful, sensual, and empowering art of belly dance. You will get to see some very exciting dance performances with various styles and props. You will also be exposed to various stories, documentaries, and other artistic pieces that feature the art of belly dance as the main attraction. So sit back, get comfortable, and be prepared to be delighted and dazzled by Belly Dance Celebrity Fashion Show. Hi, I'm Dawn Reese, and I'm excited to have you join me for the first episode of Belly Dance Celebrity Fashion Show. I began belly dancing in 1999 in New York City with the legendary Serena Wilson. Already a classically trained dancer, belly dancing came fairly easily to me. I fell in love with the dance when I was a young girl. I was at Bush Gardens and saw a live show. There were musicians and at least 10 dancers on stage. I loved it and announced to my mom that I was going to be a belly dancer when I grew up. And that's exactly what happened. I originally trained in New York City, then relocated to Miami to be the featured dancer at Touch Restaurant on South Beach. I have studied and performed all over the world, 
including Istanbul, Turkey, New York City, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, Atlanta, Boston, Atlantic City, Philadelphia, and of course, all over Florida. I have loved every minute of it. The music, the costumes, the beauty and sensuality of it all. Here in episode one, I'm going to share a book with you that is one of the only American novels to feature a belly dancer as the heroine, The Belly Dancer in the Barrel of Oil. The author, Rebecca Newman, realized that today's belly dance practitioners owed a great deal to the earliest American performers of this beautiful art form who plied their craft in the 1960s and 1970s. Many of Ms. Newman's close friends who were dancers formed the Middle East Cabaret Dancers Association, based in Los Angeles in the 1970s. They were faced with low pay, harassment, and poor working conditions. Nightclub owners could do practically anything they wanted. The brave ladies of Mecca formed a union and held strikes to call attention to issues few had any real understanding of. Sit back as we explore Ms. Newman's enlightening and entertaining great American novel, The Belly Dancer in the Barrel of Oil. Our next chapter visits our young heroine as she has begun her career as a belly dancer. The author, through her satirical profile of the early Los Angeles belly dancing scene, calls attention to how belly dancers in the early days had to overcome many challenges to successfully legitimize their art form, battling many widely held misconceptions, while often bravely navigating undesirable working conditions. Sit back and enjoy this chapter of Ms. Newman's enlightening and entertaining novel. That evening, Mr. Smith pursued me, came knocking on the dressing room door. Recognizing the panting, I picked up the little Siegfried him and went to answer the door, hoping the two-month-old puppy would bite off Mr. Smith's vital appendage. Instead, the damn dog licked Mr. Smith's face as he bent over to whisper in my ear. Unfortunately, Siegfried him was the Albert Schwarzer of the animal kingdom. He believed in love, not war. All day long, he wanted to kiss, kiss, kiss. More insistent than usual, Mr. Smith tried to push the door open, confiding, I have a gentleman here who will give you eight weeks booking in the finest club in Cairo. I opened the door. He introduced a dark, rotund gentleman who rolled into the room. Dr. Salom Hassad Hassam, Middle Eastern language advisor to the State Department. No wonder the State Department is under fire. From now on, I'm firing on them too. Slam went the door. Dr. Salom was inside. Mr. Smith laughed as he locked it from the outside. I didn't know about that, Keith. I screamed and banged. Remember those eight weeks, Mr. Smith chuckled. You bastard, I don't want them. Get him out of here. Meekly in a chair, Dr. Salam Hassad Assam waited. I tried again, more softly. Listen, Mr. Smith, you know I'm a virgin. After what you do with him, you will still be a virgin. Now go ahead. What did he mean? It took a minute to dawn on me. I yelled, listen, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. Oral sex? My dentist is against it. Let me out. It stains my two caps' teeth. I'm walking away now. The club is empty, so screaming won't help. I'll be back in ten minutes, dearie. Now play along. Well, I had hit the low point. I looked at Dr. Salon. Could I appeal to him? His oblique expression said no. He merely waited. Finally, he sputtered, hurry up. Siegfried him had settled his little furry self into the carton of torn newspapers. Dr. Salon, I said, shaking. I'll have to bandage your eyes before. He tittered. A new twist. He was ready for games. Good, good, but hurry up, he insisted. After I had bandaged his eyes, he opened his fly. I tried not to look, but I placed Siegfried him near the doctor's penis, and Siegfried him licked him, and licked him, and licked him. What are those strange cries, the doctor asked. Cries of delight. Strange. Just then, Siegfried him, who was teething, gave him a little nip, and Assam came with a sigh. Rushing the puppy back to his carton, I took the blindfold off. After zipping himself up and wiping his pants, he went to the door and shouted for Mr. Smith to open it. Then he offered to send me a present in the morning. God, I cried, looked up at the dirty ceiling. Why did you do this to me? Dr. Salam nodded. Ah, Allah was good to you. I bet you never saw a man like me. You're right. I have to throw up now. Perfectly understandable. When Smith opened the door, I hit him with my handbag. As he staggered, I picked up a chair. Wham! Some blood clanged. I picked up Siegfried him and my pocketbook and ran out in my costume. The taxi driver gave me a questioning stare. I answered, I'm coming from a killing. 
He did a double take and turned abruptly around. Meanwhile, my mind raced over the situation. Mr. Smith couldn't sue me for assault because I could sue him as an accomplice to rape and for not having enough fire exits. Suing smacked of good revenge, but it might get publicity which would hurt my little boys. As I rushed into the house distraught, Baba was paddling around in her flannel nightgown and furry slippers trying to remember where she put the espresso spoons. To herself, she said, getting absent-minded. Then she noticed me. What's the matter? Why are you going around like this? You'll catch a cold yet. What's the matter? Where are you? I was in the sewer with some rats. That's no place for a nice girl. Teaching is getting risky these days. When I was young, had I ever been young? And that's the end of chapter eight. I hope you found these short chapters of Ms. Newman's books to be insightful and captivating. Again, I'm reminded of the great debt we owe our earlier sisters for their willingness to stand up to the establishment of the time, rising above their circumstances and striving to make the beautiful art of belly dance a pursuit that is admired and respected by all. I've been belly dancing for 15 years, and thanks to their fight, I have never experienced anything like what Ms. Newman described, and I am grateful for them for their sacrifices. And now, as part of our exciting belly dance celebrity fashion show, I would like to perform an additional exciting and beautiful dance for you with one of the dramatic finishes I am known for.